I just want to make four points. Firstly, all these incidents which we have listed in the press release and which have been touched upon, which all of you know, are incidents which should not come to us as a surprise. We have at this moment in the country a group of fascist elements who are in ruling positions. We do not have a fascist state, mercifully, if we had, I wouldn't be speaking to you here. But on the other hand, if you have fascist elements in power, then it's not surprising that they would like to proceed towards the construction of a fascist state. That's exactly what is happening. A part of this process of fascification is the destruction of reason. And one very important symptom of this destruction of reason is the obliteration of the distinction between history and mythology. If the prime minister of the country, no less, believes that Ganesha proves that we actually knew plastic surgery in ancient India, then we have actually obliterated the distinction between history and mythology, and we have proceeded considerably towards making respectable a process of destruction of reason. Now, this is something which my, my second point is that this fascification, needless to say, runs completely contrary to the last century of struggle and progress that this country has made. The social emancipation movement of Ambedkar, Pule and others, the anti-colonial struggle were both complementing one another in a process of progress towards the notion of equality. And ultimately, the constitution that comes out is one that defines, as it were, a terrain of equal citizens, a fraternity of citizens, all of whom are equal. It is that which defines, as it were, both the democratic, the republican, the secular character of the Indian polity. Now, anything which privileges one community over another, anything which privileges one group over another, is something that is destructive of this notion of citizenship, and therefore it is actually carrying us back to a point where we were 100 or over 100 years ago. It's, it's, it's completely contrary to the direction of movement of this country, and it is, of course, fraught with danger. The third point I want to make is that this danger is something which is going to increase over time. If Ansar drew the analogy with Nazi Germany, and it's, it's, it's quite important that Nazi Germany, or Germany became Nazified because of the acute economic crisis of the 1930s and the mass unemployment it had generated. Now, it is a fact that the Indian economy too is one which is progressively slipping into an economic crisis in which even the kind of jobs that were being generated for the middle classes, let alone the poor, we know that peasants have been committing suicide, we know that the working class has in fact been ruthlessly suppressed during this period, but forget about them. At any rate, neoliberalism from 1991 onwards had given a certain hope to the middle class youth because uh, all kinds of jobs in particular sectors were opening up. The crisis is going to mean that even that is no longer going to be available. And consequently, in a period like this, there would be much greater, much more fertile ground for fascist forces to strengthen themselves by pitting one segment against another, by saying reservations are bad, you're not getting a job, is because of Dalit, it, Dalit is taking away your job, and so on. And of course, at the same time, as far as the rich are concerned, they would, the corporate capital is concerned, in a period of crisis, they can make themselves better off by appropriating other people's property, exactly like the land ordinance promises that they would. So the Precisely the phase we are entering now is a phase in which these kinds of elements are going to get a field state. The fourth point I want to make is that against this, the kind of resources which are required for a struggle, for instance the intellectual resources required for a struggle, are resources which are systematically 
being destroyed through the destruction of institutions. You know, institutions are very important because ideas come from universities, ideas come from institutions, and if you destroy institutions, then fundamentally you become dependent on the advanced countries, dependent on Europe, dependent on America for borrowed ideas. And those borrowed ideas are not going to tell us which way to progress as far as our society is concerned. And therefore, these people who talk most in terms of, 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 of India's glorious past are the ones who really are responsible ideologically for the subservience that this country would be having in the coming years towards uh, the metropolitan countries, towards the metropolitan societies. Putting hand-picked, second-rate, mediocre people in charge of academic institutions ensuring that those people destroy any scope for rational discourse in the institution that they had are ways of destroying these institutions, ways of destroying ideas. Ultimately, it is anti-colonial ideas that give rise to anti-colonial struggles. It is anti-fascist ideas that give rise to anti-fascist struggles. And if there's destruction of ideas, then the scope for struggle thereby gets attenuated. And consequently, before the fascification of the society proceeds any further, it's important for all of us to stand up and oppose it. Thank you.